this beautiful day. My name is Neil. I'm the pastor here at this church. And uh, I'd like to start off this Sunday with a couple of jokes. I haven't done that in a while. Not that I've received emails saying, I really miss the jokes. <laughs> Even though I, no, I haven't. You might realize why I haven't done this in a while after you hear the jokes. I told my doctor I need help. I'm addicted to Instagram. He looked at me confused and said, I'm sorry, I'm not following you. <laughs> my dog used to chase people on a bike. I finally found out a way how to stop them. I took his bike away. That's an old one. Wah, wah. Last one. Brain cells die. Amen. <laughs> Skin cells die. And hair cells die. But fat cells must have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior because they seem to have eternal life. <laughs> Amen. If fat cells could die like hair cells. That's so true. Well, today I want to speak about being loved. To be loved. Love is a powerful word, isn't it? I uh, tend to say love probably too much. And uh, for some people's comfort, probably. <laughs> I, I love so many things. I love fall weather. I love hoodie weather. I love Chipotle. I love buffets. Yeah, that's those fat cells. I love fresh coffee. I love extending love to people. I really love doing that. And I just want to say, I've seen that in this church, that I've seen you just extend a, a heart of love to everyone that comes in the door. It doesn't matter where they're coming from, but there's just this, there's this love over this church, and the Lord just has blessed us with that. That I see you loving everyone. I love that about our church. Giving the gift of love sometimes is easier than receiving love. Receiving love means there's something in return. I'm just going to receive love, or it sometimes means there's nothing in return. I'm just going to receive this love. And sometimes when you receive love, there feels like there may be some strings attached. It's when you tell someone in a relationship that may not feel the same way that you love them. They're like, that's great. <laughs> that's exciting. <laughs> Do you want to go get dinner? I'm so glad. Because when we say we love someone, it sometimes feels like they should say it back. In my humble opinion, this is one of the hardest attributes of God for people to understand is that God just loves us with no return, like not to receive anything back. He just loves us. And it's so hard to, to fathom that because people... Love us as long as we love them. But God just loves us. As we've been looking at the disciple John this entire month, John's the one in the Bible called the Beloved. What a cool name. John the Beloved. Has a good ring to it, doesn't it? Jacob the Beloved. Jean the Beloved. Has a good ring, doesn't it? John owns this. He owns this. That's my name. That's what Jesus calls me. As we look at the Gospel of John today, John wrote this book, and many people believe it was the last of the four Gospels. He wrote it in a view of hoping people and helping people would believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. That he's the Messiah. He's the Son of God. 
that came and lived in the flesh. But what's really interesting in this book is he doesn't refer to himself in the entire book. If I was writing a book about somebody and I wanted you to know that I was there and I witnessed it, I would probably refer to myself quite often. But John just refers to himself as the disciple who Jesus loved. And it kind of just leaves you hanging like, who is this guy? Well, it's the one that wrote the book because he owns the beloved. He is the disciple who Jesus loved. John used this phrase six times in, in his book. We're going to look at those. John 13, 23. Jesus, this is when Jesus predicted his betrayal. He said, one of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. So it was the night that Jesus predicted his betrayal that somebody was going to turn on him. And we're actually going to be talking about this verse in, in great depth next week. So I invite you to come back to hear more about that. It's super cool. Great story. But John refers to himself as the one whom Jesus loved. John 19, 26, Jesus on the cross, when he was speaking to Jesus, to John and uh, Jesus' mom, he says this, when Jesus saw his mother there the, and the disciple whom Jesus loved standing nearby, he said to her, woman, here is your son. It's pretty cool. Another time John refers to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved was this is the empty tomb of Jesus. 20, John 20 verse 2 says, So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So all these memories of John sharing these memories with his book, with the, with the reader, the one the disciple that Jesus loved. Verse 21, John 21, 7 says, Then Jesus whom, I'm, I'm sorry, then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. And as soon as Simon Peter heard this, it is the Lord. He wrapped his outer garments around him, for he had taken them off and jumped into the water. One more time here, John 21, 20, when Jesus reinstates Peter after Peter denied Jesus three times. Peter turned around and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. So as you can see, there's many times where John refers to himself as the one whom Jesus loved, the disciple whom Jesus loved. And he's constantly is referring to himself in this book that he writes about Jesus. This word love is is found in a couple of different ways. In one way is, one meaning of it is agape. It's agape love. A love agape love. Agape love means that you would actually just give love and expect nothing in return. That's a powerful love. It's self-sacrificing. I just love you. You don't have to do anything with this agape love. This is the type of love that Jesus had for John. There's another type of love that's referred to when, when John refers to himself, and that's phileo love. This is a deep friendship. This is a deep connection with somebody. You know how you just connect? This is that type of love. Think of uh, David and Jonathan in your Bible in the Old Testament. They had this phileo love. They really loved each other. I'm there for you. I'll be there for you. But in, in John's gospel, agape love and phileo love are actually morphed together to become a new love. They're used so many times in John's gospel that you can't distinguish, is, is John talking about agape love or is he talking about phileo love? That's pretty cool. Which means that Jesus loved John and Jesus really liked John. Have you ever thought about that? Good for John, right? <laughs> Isn't that nice to know about John? Jesus really likes him. Good. What does this mean for us today? Well, the same love that, that Jesus has for John is the same love that Jesus has for you and I. Jesus didn't change his love language. He didn't change how much he loves people. 
In Romans 5, 8 says this. It says, but God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners. What is that word? Can you say that with me? Still. Still sinners. While we were still this doesn't mean when you turned your life around and changed everything and came back to God and, and all that. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's that agape love. You can't do anything to be approved of this love. I just love you. I'm just going to pour out love on you. Agape love. While I'm still sinners, while I'm still shaking my fist to the heavens at God. While I'm still running from him. While well, I'm still making a gigantic mess of my life, this agape love, this is the love that God has for us. It's beautiful, isn't it? Phileo love that God has for us. Have you ever thought Jesus enjoys you today? <laughs> He actually likes spending time with you. God enjoys you. He enjoys his creation. He created you and he said it was good. 1 John 4.16 says, So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in his love abides in God, and God abides in him. So we have come to know and believe that we actually believe that we can abide in God. We can abide in Jesus. I spend time with people that I want to spend time with, unless I'm getting paid. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> So Jesus invites us to abide in him. So many times it talks about he's the vine and, or, or what a, wait a second. He's the vine. We're the branches. Okay. Vine branches. I'm thinking of fruit. Okay. <laughs> so he wants us to connect to him. He wants to be connected with us. He actually enjoys you. He enjoys you. Loves spending time with you. This is that phileo love. We come to believe that, that God actually enjoys us. When our identity is found in being God's beloved, agape love, phileo love, it changes people. It'll change you from the, from the inside out. It starts to become noticeable. This person actually is believes that God loves them. The first thing that it changes is we find security and acceptance in God and not man anymore. People are so hard to please. Amen? It's tough. It's tough to please people. I bought this shirt in Nashville because it just, it just hit home. You know those, those t-shirts that say a lot of stuff on them and they're just like, I got to get that. And it says, you can't please everyone. You're not ice cream. I was like, I got to buy that shirt. <laughs> it just hit home. People are so tough to please. So tough. But when our identity is found in being loved by God, we're not looking to please everybody anymore because we're we're enjoyed by God. We're loved by Him. Our hearts are already fulfilled. It's not up to someone or something to finally please us and fill us up. Our hearts at 100% of being loved. This makes a huge difference in our expectation of people, doesn't it? All of a sudden, our spouse is able to be human. They can have a bad day. They can be in a funk. Not looking for them to please and do everything to fulfill my heart's desires. God does that. When we're dating, we can be patient with someone and, and wait to really get to know them until we're able to just totally trust. Not looking for them to 
fulfill all of my life's desires. The Lord's done that. Jesus has done that. Being loved by God changes us. So it changes us from not pleasing people as much. Another thing that it changes is being loved by God also changes our hearts and even our actions. You know, John wasn't always known as John the Beloved. He was actually known as something quite different. Found in Mark 3, 17, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, this is the same John that we're talking about, to them he gave the name Bonegas, which means son of thunder. Sons of thunder. This is John, the beloved. He was also known as a son of thunder. Son of thunder means John's down to get froggy sometimes. John's ready to fight. The dude will bring it. Don't mess with John and James. These guys are sons of thunder. John, the beloved, was also <laughs> ready to throw fists. Multiple times, John was called the sons of thunder when he first started following Jesus. Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem, and he stopped by a Samaritan village. And I just want you to see in the, in the Bible what that, what that means. Like, as John was discovering that he's actually God's beloved what he was coming from in Luke 9, 52. And he sent messages on ahead and they went to the Samaritan village to get them ready. But the people there did not welcome him. So the people didn't really want Jesus in their village right now because he's on his way to Jerusalem. Why are you stopping here? <laughs> because he was heading to get things ready for him, but the people didn't want him there because he was heading for Jerusalem. When the disciple James and John... There's our James and John, the same John, saw this. They asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven and just destroy these dudes? <laughs> these sons of thunder, John the beloved, like, let's call down fire like Elijah and light this place up. <laughs> it changes you to be in the presence of God. You go from being a son of thunder to being called the beloved. His actions started to fall away from being a son of thunder and started taking on that identity of being the beloved of Jesus. When we take on our identity found in being loved by God, we can let others be loved. I said that there were six times that John referred to himself, or it was referred to as the one that Jesus loved in the, in the Gospel of John. And five of them were actually for John. One of them wasn't. Listen to John 11.3. When Lazarus is sick, they sent word to Jesus, and this is how John wrote it. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. Now, if I'm writing a book to people and I'm using the reference of like the one that Jesus loved the entire time when I'm referring to myself, this is so confusing. John's not sick. So he sends word to Jesus, the one you love is sick. John's not referring to himself. He's actually referring to Lazarus. When our identity is found in being beloved by God, it's easy to share that love. You actually, <laughs> this is something that, that hits really home with me, but you actually rejoice when other people succeed. Because otherwise it's like a fight and we're all out here trying to fight to get God's approval and his love. But when you become beloved by God, you actually rejoice when others get things that you've been praying for. That's tough, isn't it? This used to eat me up because here's the thing. I thought that I was approved by God by what I did for him. And so many times I get in that trap of I'm doing so much for you. And then I would see others succeed in things that I've always dreamed about. But yet alone... 
I'm sitting here doing all this stuff, and I know their life, and they're not doing as much as me. <laughs> Let's be real. They're not. They're not serving the Lord like me. But when you become beloved by God, and that's your identity, you can actually rejoice when others get things that you've been praying for. When others succeed, when others move forward. Because God still loves me just as much as everybody else, no matter what I do for him. It changes us being beloved by God. And the last thing in being loved by God is I just want to end with this. I want to leave this with you. As I was writing this message this week, I, I kept coming back to this, this phrase. And I was actually woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning with this and felt like the Lord spoke that to me, which is, be loved. Go ahead. You know, go ahead and be loved. Be loved. It's an action of nothing. Today, I just invite you, be loved. Not because of the great things you've done this week for God or the, the amazing moments of serving him you've done or, but just to accept the fact that you are loved by God in agape love of just pouring out his heart to you and expecting nothing in return. Be loved. Accept it. See, he loves you that much. Be loved. This felt like we we're supposed to embrace that this morning. In the busyness of life, how many times do we take an opportunity and just step back and just be loved? Just accept His love. Let His love just shower us. I love that song. <laughs> like I said, I use the word love a lot. I love that song that we sang earlier. I just want to be in the room. And I'm not, not doing anything else. I just showed up. And I just want to be here. I just want to be in his presence. I want to be in his love. And that's my prayer for us today is to just accept that, to believe that, to take that home with us this week. What this does is it opens up so many opportunities in our life to just spend time with Jesus. It's not like this written out schedule. I got this allotted five minutes that I got to do this thing. Like Jesus wants everything. He wants every aspect. He loves us and he also just likes spending time with us. And so we can just be loved by Jesus throughout our entire week, throughout our month. Maybe it's the first time that you've heard that, that Jesus loves you unconditionally. This is that moment in time, and this is that Sunday where you should just say, you know what, I'm just going to start following Jesus. I'm going to give my life to him. Maybe you've been like me, and you've tried every other life out there to try to find love to try to find acceptance, to try to find yourself. This is that moment in time where you just say, you know what, I'm just going to start following Jesus. I'm going to give him my life. I've tried everything else. Jesus is what we've all been looking for. I just invite you to put your hope in a God that just loves you just the way that you are today. Not because you've done something, not because you've achieved something, but he just loves you. And so just trust him. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Fill me with your love. I give you my life. I've made mistakes. Forgive me. This is that moment in time.
Be loved. Be loved. I just felt like we're just supposed to sing. I just want to be in the room. Sometimes when you're learning a song, maybe you've never heard the song, you're like, oh, I got to follow the words on the screen. I just want us to stick with the chorus and just, I just want to be in the room. I want to be in the room. I have the worship team come back up as they make their way up. Let's just go ahead and pray. Yeah, come, Holy Spirit. The love of Jesus is in this room, right here, right now. His power and His presence is here right now. Come, Holy Spirit. Even more, Lord. up with me and let's just sing this song together.